What's up, everybody? Thanks again for joining in for Tankers Fantasy Football. We're going to do another mock draft here. We're going to switch it up. We're going to try the standard format instead of PPR like we've done in the past here. I mean, you know, I don't do a lot of standard leagues, but I know a lot of you out there in fantasy football and do. So us at Tankers Fantasy Football are going to probably uh, do a little mock draft here to maybe help you out on your upcoming drafts. So we're doing 12... 12 team here. I'm taking six. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go by the end. I'm gonna take 11 and see what we get. Cause I think I can still get some pretty solid running backs here at the end of the first round and the end of the second. And then in my three four turn, I think I can probably sew up a couple pairs of decent wide receivers and maybe scoop me up like a Jordan Reed who I love at the end of the third. All right. So one thing we're gonna do is also at the end. We're going to get you a screenshot, hopefully, of the entire draft so you can look at the boards, see what you think. All right, I'm picking at six, and the top three receivers I are got, gone. I think um, you got to take our boy from Clinton, Iowa. I think you I'm do. Between, I'm between. I'm a little torn, but I'm going to go with David Johnson here. I think PPR, he might slip a little bit. But standard is so important, I feel like, to I mean, Gurley was back. already off the board. And Peterson was off the board, too. I mean, I think the highest ceiling guy out there was David Johnson for you at that point. Yeah, like we said, I feel like PPR is his main, is his, where he really shines in value. But you have to sew up a quality RB1 in standard in the first couple rounds. Otherwise, that cliff happens. And it's not like PPR where you can swoop up these guys late and they can be effective. It's if when they're gone, they're gone. It's gone. Like you don't get you know what Gio Bernard, Danny Woodheads of the world, like they don't have Theo Riddick's. Like they don't have like barely any value. No. In, in standard leagues, like you can't scoop those guys up late and feel good about them in your running back slots. Like that's not what's up. I mean, these guys at wide receiver though. I mean, the wide receivers are going later. I mean, I think. I think Lamar Miller here at the end of the first, I think he could, I think he has real potential to lead the National Football League in touches. I, mean, I that, think if there's anyone that can beat out Peterson. I mean, he's getting all the work in Houston. I mean, he's a goal line, third down back. He's a first, second, third down back with goal line work and everything. He's getting those catches. I mean, I know it doesn't matter here, but receiving yards does. I mean, right. total yardage and touchdowns, I think, are totally going to be there for him. I'm up back here after Charles and Allen Robinson went on the turn. Seven running backs in the first round. Which and I think you since I see. sold up Lamar and all those guys have gone, you know, I mean, I'm looking at wide receiver now because it's either Eddie Lacy. I mean, I know Tony Romo's hurt, but I think Des Bryant is a more heavy of a standard player. I mean, he gets them yards, and he knows he's, he's going to get he's touchdowns. Never, he's never been a 100 catch guy anyway yeah he's not that big time ppr guy if anybody's out there getting you those standard points with the yards and the touchdown it's gonna be des bryant over the likes of say brandon marshall or keenan allen like keenan allen is a ppr guy yeah if he's if he plays a full season you can count on him easily 10 touchdowns i mean i would take even with deck prescott i think he's got 10 touchdowns in him easy if he's playing oh, full I mean, season out there the 12 guy sniped down robinson i was hoping and praying that down robinson was going to be there for me in the second but and he knew what he had to do and he had to take the best running back before the real hard rb1 cliff happened he took charles and he took he took Allen robinson who once again has a lot more standard value than PPR because he's not really. He's an 80 catch guy. He's not that 100 catch guy, but he's that 1400 yard, 14 touchdown guy. All right. I'm between Jordy and LaShawn McCoy. And LaShawn McCoy is going mid second and standard. And PPR, he's going mid third. So it's a full round difference just because running backs are so heavy. And I'm going to try again two running backs here. I'm going to try the technique, and now I'm just going to kind of use my next few rounds here to throw out some oh, standard some, format monsters at receivers. There'll be some receivers there for you in the mid-third, and I guarantee it. All right. Well, here it is. What we got looking yeah. at now? We got right, some guys still. Right now, I'm looking at who could possibly save my team here. I think it's Brandon Knights. 
Drew Brees' new favorite target in town, Brandon Cooks. That's what I was going to say. I think you guys saw up Brandon Cooks here, no doubt. He came on so strong late in the season last year, and he turned into a touchdown guy. I think he had eight touchdowns second half of the season. This guy can get you yards. He can get you touchdowns for a little guy. He's not your Jarvis Landry, who is a small guy getting you 100 balls for 1,000 yards, four or five touchdowns. He's a guy who's going to get you that standard production. I took my guy. I was looking at Sammy Watkins coming back. I mean, it didn't happen. I'm looking at a guy I really like. You know, this is the running. This is the backfield that's been turning it on. Like we said, I mean, the Titans' backfield is looking beastly out there in the preseason. And I'm going to get me a little taste here in DeMarco Murray at the end of the third. I think DeMarco Murray, I mean, I don't think he's going to do what he did in Dallas, but if he can return top 10 value to me at where I just took him, I mean, that's that's money. All right, we got Jeremy Hill win. That's who I was kind of All going right. for there. I was going to double down, but once again, you know, people know what they're doing out there. <laughs> so I am looking at Forte, or I don't think so. I think I got to go maybe look at the wide receivers again real quick. Or because, tight ends. Oh, like I said, I forgot. I even said, I mentioned at the beginning, my boy's still there. Jordan Reed, thanks for reminding me, Travis. <laughs> I even talked about at the beginning. I'm slipping out there, but I'm sewing him up right now. And he's a guy, 11 regular season touchdowns. Add another one yeah. there in postseason, 12 touchdowns on the year. I mean, he. I think he's golden. In, I mean, as far as the tight you. end goes, I mean, he's PPR or standard beast. I mean, Either look at, one. He'll get you 1,000 yards. He'll get you 10 touchdowns. I got him two rounds later than Gronk in this very draft. And if anybody's going to outscore the man beast... We're talking about Jordan Reed. All right. We're talking about we're talking about Jordan Reed. I've got some pretty interesting receivers here. And I'll tell you what, if I was PPR, I'd be falling in love with Jarvis Landry, but I feel like his stock just takes a major, major hit in standard. And it comes I'm more gonna, of a fifth round play in standard. Yeah, and I'm gonna go Jeremy Macklin here in the fourth. I think Macklin has more, way more touchdown potential than Landry, clearly. And I think the yard potential is definitely there. I mean, the re receptions aren't, but that's not a factor. So if he's doubling down on him in yards and touchdowns, I mean, that's in the books and standard. Ain't no, I mean, that's all you get. So what is there to talk about? I mean, if you think Macklin's going to go out there and get you more yards and touchdowns on a guy, then that's your boy. This is falling right into my hands here. It really is. This is... I went with the two running back start here, hoping maybe I can get some decent guys. I'm getting some studs. In Stud, standard standard studs. Uh, you're about to reel in a, now, a I, wide receiver two. Now, in, I know Brandon in, Marshall. In any format. I know Brandon Marshall had a good year last year. But Eric Decker still, caught, still got you double-digit touchdowns. This is a guy who's still going to fill up that stat sheet. He's not a PPR monster. He might get you 70, 80 catches. But this guy is going to find his way to the end zone. And right now, if we're in a one flex league, I've got David Johnson, LaShawn McCoy, Cooks, Macklin, Decker. That's beasted. I mean, Jordan Reed picks kind of slowing me down in the wide receiver area. Well, I'm looking at a guy like Larry Fitzgerald, who, I mean, he's a touchdown guy. He's a yards guy. I mean, I think he's still the number one weapon in Arizona, no matter what people want to believe. Especially John Brown. I mean, he's he's been slipping a lot. I think he'll get back into the discussion once the season starts, but Fitzgerald's easily the heavy favorite and in another, that offense. Another yards touchdown guy I'm about to scoop up here, Alan Hearns. Alan Hearns last year, 1,000 yards, 10, 10 touchdowns. touchdowns. I he's mean, doing it. I feel like both Jags receivers are PP, or they're good in PPR, but they're standard monsters. They're stand, I, think they're, I think they're a value ups in standard significantly. Alan, Alan Robinson only caught 80 balls last year. The guy had 1,400 yards with 14, 14 touchdowns. 14 and 14. Beast moding out there. Right. I mean, I'm looking at Lamar Miller and DeMarco Murray in my backs, which, you know, I'm probably, I really like for where I got them. I got Dez and Larry Fitzgerald now and Hearns feeling good about it, especially since I got Jordan Reed in the tight end slot so far. 
I mean, I know your team's be beasting, but I feel pretty good about that little squad out of the 11 hole. Alright, I'm between two guys here. Let's pull the trigger. But oh well. Mm -hmm. Alright. I'm going to say I took Tyler Lockett. So we're going to swap that. I will use a little cut paste there at the end there. But I took Tyler Lockett for the upside. And I love it. I love Tyler Lockett. Alright. Looking, coming back to me, I'd like to get one more back here before I feel like the cliff completely falls off. And I'm hoping a guy like Derrick Henry falls to me. Because like you said, that Tennessee backfield has looked really good. Really good. Really good, people. I know the Titans defense has got to hold them for them running backs to really help you out here. But if that's the case... I mean, I think they're looking to run the ball 30, maybe 35 times a game combined with these two guys. And, I mean, that that could both produce good running back value. Easy RB2s. All right. Henry took him. All right. I'm back so I up got, here. So, I got Henry on. He's my first running back on my bench. And I feel like there's some great upside there. And I don't have to play him right away with David Johnson and McCoy. I'm still hovering out there. You know, quarterbacks are starting to fly off. I got to jump on before it's gone. So I'm going to go out there. I'm going to grab me up old Uncle Phil, Philip Rivers. I mean, we're talking about I just took Uncle Phil as what? What are we looking at here? Tenth quarterback, off, tenth quarterback off the board? Is that what we're looking at? Yes. Tenth quarterback off the board. And Uncle it, Phil feeling good about it. And last year, he was number one for like 10, 11 weeks I of mean, the season. I mean, the only reason why I didn't keep finishing like that is because he lost everybody. <laughs> Keenan Allen Keenan died Keenan Allen was gone. Him. What did he do? Split I mean, his kidney with, out there? And that was with Antonio Gates suspended for first four yeah, weeks Yeah, Antonio the Gates season. was hurt a lot too. I mean, he didn't have anybody. It was Wilton out there. I mean, And that's with no running game to take right. the pressure off. Right, I'm going to go up there. I'm up again. Probably is going to scoop up any kind of wide receiver. I mean, this guy is kind of a bum, and I hate him. <laughs> but if we're going to go, uh, if we're going to go uh, touchdowns, touchdown guy, I think Jordan Matthews here in the eighth round is value. I mean, I don't really like him. Yeah, I don't like him either. He was the ghost out there who got you he the was. best season he ever had, but you never saw it. Yeah, he, I mean, if he can go out there and do a 1,008 again, I mean, I'm feeling good about him. But I just, I am afraid of it. But I think in the eighth round here, it's not the worst thing I could have done. All right, I am in need of a quarterback before it gets too crazy. And I'm getting a guy who I think is still first-tier quarterback. And I think his weapons are better this year than even the last couple years, and that's Eli Manning. Last year, he had Reuben Randall out there throwing the ball. I think Shepard, he's got to be better than that. And, of oh, course, yeah. Odell's still there. The guy throws for 4,000 yards, 30 touchdowns. It's not like I'm getting a schlub out there that I'm chucking. All right. Now, I still don't have a tight end here. And I'll tell you what, this guy is not... Your prototypical PPR guy, but in standard, I feel like I can wait a little bit, and I'm going to get Martellus Bennett. I feel like he's a guy of any of the last tight ends, I don't even would say... Uh, it was him or Jimmy Graham. Even the last six, seven tight ends selected before him, I think he could outdo them all in touchdowns. I think, I think he's going to be touchdown dependent, but in standard... That's kind of what you need in a tight end. I'm going to go pure running back upside and scoop up TJ Yeldon right here at the uh, end of the ninth round. And I'm feeling pretty decent about it. I mean, he's only my third running back, which is pretty soft. But, I mean, with a guy like that, I mean, in that position, he's looked pretty decent out there in the preseason. I mean, it's not like I'll... He, he may, he's been making some moves. He had one fumble opening drive the other night, but he he's recovered well throughout the rest of the game there. He's shown flashes that he can be the guy. All right, I'm going to take a high upside, possibly a touchdown guy this year. You know, they're talking about maybe this guy's the number one 
wide receiver come, uh, coming out for the Carolina Panthers. I think he can do it. I'm going to scoop up Devin Funches here at the beginning of the 10th. And I think as my fourth wide receiver, I feel pretty solid about it. All right. I haven't touched receivers. Well, actually, no. I got four receivers here. I'm just going to go a guy that I feel like can be a good bye week filler at receiver, and that's Travis Benjamin. I feel like he really can shine in this offense with Phil throwing him the rock. I really do. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's going to be that deep threat, so yards and touchdowns are clearly on the table. Yeah. And he looked pretty good the other day watching him out there in week three. I mean, Phil can get it going with him, and Phil can chuck that ball deep. He can. He throws a great deep ball. So I've got him and Lockett on my bench that I can just kind of wait on, see what happens. All right. See who we got out there. Who we got out there it's for getting, you? It's getting a little dark, especially at running backs. I feel like running backs, these are more PPR guys. You know, I waited a little bit on tight end, and I think I'm just going to sew up another tight end just in case that something crazy happens to corn. And I'm going to get Jimmy Graham. I know it didn't look good last year, but I feel like it can't be any worse. This is Russell Wilson's team, and he can be, they got him to be a red zone threat. So we'll see what can happen. Again, he's my second tight end. I, I waited pretty long on him. I at least need some insurance of that position since I feel pretty good about the other ones. I'm looking wide receiver here. You know, I'm just trying to pick up some scrap bums off the heap here. And, and we're talking about touchdowns, and we're talking about some upside. I want to scoop up Tavon Austin. I mean, he ten, got 10 touchdowns last year. 10 touchdowns last year, and I feel like standard, he's better than PPR. Uh, he had as many carries last year as catches. And we're talking about into the 11th. I mean, we're talking about a guy that scored 10 touchdowns, and I'm getting into the 11th. I mean, I feel pretty solid about that. I don't even, I mean, PPR, I don't like the guy. We're talking standard here. 10 touchdowns into the 11th? That's sexy boy territory. <laughs> All right, who you like coming back at? You? I don't know. I feel <laughs> no like I gotta thing. get. I'm gonna just go. I'm gonna go DeAndre Washington just because I feel like, you know, if there's anybody who's gonna get in there and make it happen, Latavius Murray could either look like a bum, or he could get hurt. And if DeAndre Washington, if either of those things happen, I feel like DeAndre Washington could take that ball and run with it. I mean, I I kind of liked Latavius Murray this year. But, I mean, he kind of fell out of the coaching staff's favor last year, but they just didn't have anybody else to put in for him. I and mean, now with DeAndre Washington on the scene, I mean, if he halters again, I, I don't think they'll hesitate to let this guy at least get his opportunity. And if that's the case, he could return major value here for me in the 12th round. All right, I might be overpaying a little for this guy, but... I'm going to get Philip Dorsett. Philip Dorsett. I, I love it. There's going to be a lot of three receiver sets out there with luck. And if for some reason, I've got, if for some reason T.Y. Hilton goes down or even Moncrief goes down and that guy gets top two team and targets, this guy can really be productive with Andrew Luck throwing the ball 50 times a game. All right, it's getting pretty dark out there. What are you looking at out there? But I'm going to get a guy. I mean, you know when defenses start to go, it's getting pretty dark. I'm going to get Jarek McKinnon. Jarek McKinnon, another guy yeah. like DeAndre Washington. He's a guy, there's no one runs the ball more than the Vikings. And if for some reason Adrian Peterson goes down in standard, I feel like McKinnon could be your saving grace. I, I'm thinking about going, I know it's crazy, but 
I love the how the kind of gym going a little brother and a little Chris Hogan. Chris Hogan out there. brother right out there. But I mean, you know, them Patriots love them little white guy riders series. <laughs> you know, they do. If Amendola's situation doesn't get better, if he keeps like, if he doesn't get over this injury very well, I mean, I think Chris Hogan. I mean, I think Chris Hogan's better than Danny Amendola already. So I think that's what he's got. I think he's already got that going for him. I'm gonna throw another flyer. I'm gonna throw another wide receiver dart at a guy as we're talking about the other podcast. If you told me if he sent me a picture of him and didn't tell me who he was, I'd say that guy looks like the man beast and he looks like <laughs> he looks like the sex out there. <laughs> and we're talking Terrell Pryor. And he might turn into nothing. <laughs> like I thought he was gonna be. Like two or three weeks ago. I and he wasn't even on the radar. Well, now he is on the radar. And I think scooping him up at this late, I feel like that's something you can take to the bank, you know? I mean, just put him back, put him in your back pocket, wait till it pans out. And if it doesn't, just cut him for somebody else. I mean, it isn't like you paid the piper. He wasn't a penciled-in starter. All right. I'm going to go with another guy who kind of needs an injury to make it happen. But he, he was okay last year when Eddie Lacy was down, but... James Starks, I mean, we're talking 14th round here in a standard, so you might as well scoop up as many backs as you think you can get on the field. If Cheeseburger Eddie doesn't turn if, around at all, I mean, James P90X Starks. If don't work out for him. James Starks could be a very good bye week guy if, if Cheeseburger Eddie is still doing Cheeseburger Eddie things. <laughs> I mean, James Starks had as many, what, 20-point weeks as Doug Martin did last year. I mean, my goodness. All right. I'm going to take another flyer here, 15th round. I'm going to take Will Fuller. He's looked good in preseason. And I think with Hopkins on the other side of the ball, he can take some pressure off. And, you know, there's no guy last year that really embraced that number two receiver. <laughs> Look at Diddy's. <laughs> Diddy's. <laughs> Embrace that number two Diddy's role. Diddy's has arisen. <laughs> He's alive. Diddy's has risen. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, put, I'm gonna pull up last pick of the draft here. I'm just gonna get Paul Perkins because I feel like he's a guy that could come out of nowhere and be the number one running back for a pretty <laughs> decent offensive football team. And if that's the case, at the end of the 15th round, at the end of this mock draft, I feel pretty solid about that. All right. All right. Let's look so, at some. Let's look at it. Well, let's pick a team that we feel you know did a pretty good job for themselves out there. What are you looking at? See, I'm going to screenshot this before I forget here. All right, I'm going to look at these teams. I'm going to try to pick a team that I feel is a real contender in this league. I mean... I mean, I think, okay. I mean, number two spot, he did pretty decent for himself. I mean, a lot of a Todd Gurley, which is definitely the number one standard running back. And he got Keenan Allen at the end of the second, which is pretty decent value for he's, a guy. He's not a he's not a standard guy, but he's still a high end receiver. Oh yeah, I mean his other two receivers are Baldwin and Moncrief. I mean Baldwin was a big touchdown guy last year, and they're talking about Moncrief being the being the almost the go to guy in Indianapolis. I mean that's I, kind of pipe dreaming, but that's not out of the realm of possibilities. And I like Delaney Walker, and I like his bench actually too. I love Rashad Jennings. Yeah, he's got a judge, and he's got a touchdown guy in LeGarrette Blount out there LeGarrette in the later Blount. rounds. I think Tyler Boyd's got upside. He's got Wheaton the upside. two guy. I mean, I do. This, this guy, I think, I mean, his, his tight end's Delaney Walker. He's not sleeping there either. I mean, Jameis Winston's a starter, but whatever. I mean, that's his only real weakness, and James, Jameis Winston did throw for over 4,000 yards last year. I mean, he's not a complete bomb. And I, I like 12. I like Jamal Charles and Jeremy Hill running out there in the backfield. I love Allen Robinson. I like Marvin Jones. I'm not big on the Josh Gordon that early. I feel like he's struggling there at that third receiver spot. Uh, I mean, he's got to pull. He's got to probably run either uh, Sharp or uh, Stephon Diggs out there in his flex for. And then well, Jay Ajayi somehow becomes relevant right. again, I which like I his, doubt. I like his first five rounds. After that, he kind of falls Yeah, he didn't do as good as the later round as our boy over here in and two I, hole. And I don't get Danny Woodhead at all in his standard. 
I would, I just I feel like he's got besides if he doesn't get a touchdown, he has literally no value in a standard. And I don't know. I mean, well, okay, what team we're looking at? We're gonna give you a team that we probably feel kind of poorly about. We're looking around here. What team do you feel like drafted themselves out of contention? And that's kind of a hard thing to do because drafts yeah. probably like drafts only really laying the foundation for your season. I mean, you still got to be riding that waiver wire and trying to make trades out there. I mean, you can't depend on the drafts not going to win you your league. It's going to lay the foundation, but you can you can't draft yourself a title, but you can draft yourself out of the title. I'm looking at number eight. I'm. I mean, the the main thing I'm looking at is he drafted D'Angelo Williams as his second back, and his third back is Christine is Michael, who Christine I like. Michael. My goodness. So you're saying D'Angelo's going to start for you for three games, and then you're hoping Christine Michael or Spencer Ware Wins are the, the guys like in that, that offseason that by week an, four. That requires an injury. I mean, Spencer Ware is not taking the job. Jamal Charles is not injured. I mean, Christy Michael might actually have a chance to do that against Thomas Rawls, but you're thinking that's going to happen before week four? I mean, that's pretty tough. I mean, if Thomas Rawls is out there, I mean, they're probably going 50-50 Absolute best for Christine Michael. I mean, that's his, the absolute best you can his hope for. Fifth running back is Darren Sproles, who hasn't had over ninety no. carries in a season he's, in his career. He is stand. He is he is not a standard option whatsoever. He is not. So I'm. I mean, the guy paid up for Cam Newton in the third, which basically like sentenced him because yeah, it, because it really, that, that it really sentenced did. him. It really did because now your third best is John Brown. Who, I mean, I, I feel okay about John Brown in the flex, but, man, that would look a lot better John Brown nah, coming off your bench. John Brown, when you're running out there with a guy like Elliott, who's a rookie, who you're not even sure. I mean, you want him to be that guy, and we all think he's going to be that guy, but what if he's not? I mean, if he's not as good as this guy thinks he is, I mean, that team is instant garbage. I mean, he doesn't even need the help of the likes of Christine Michael and not be getting it done for him. I mean, Rand if Randall Cobb doesn't turn it around and get those, like, what did he do, like 14, 15? touchdowns in 2014 yeah, I mean if he doesn't, doesn't do that again there. if he's still around that 5 to 6 range I mean this team is bad news it's really bad it can get bad in a hurry I kind of feel bad because I love Mike Evans and he's just dying on that team yeah. I think Mike Evans is I think Mike Evans is definitely the highest floor player he drafted alright once again we'll get you a screenshot up here so let us know what you think comment Make Share, sure you comment, s- like below. Subscribe to us. Email us at Tankers Fantasy Football. We at- will answer your questions in the comment section below, people. We will. We have done this. We will do it again. <laughs> and we enjoy doing it. So please, comment, share, and like. Thanks a bunch for watching. We'll see you soon.